Legally Blonde, the 2001 film starring Reese Witherspoon as Elle Woods, a law student turned lawyer, is one of those films that really pisses me off as a lawyer. Now, when you see lawyers in films like Legally Blonde or Suits, TV shows like Suits or other just basic shows like SVU that have lawyers in them, they're often completely incorrectly portrayed. The same thing goes for law school. Law school is often very inaccurately portrayed. And Legally Blonde possibly does the worst job at portraying law students and lawyers. And today, I'm gonna break down six points of hate on Legally Blonde, things that I found absolutely wrong and incorrect as a lawyer. Now, I am Andrew Esquire, and this is The Legal Mindset, where we use the law to give you an unfair advantage. So let's get in to this Legally Blonde mess. When I was in law school, I remember almost every girl had watched that movie. It was the basic law school chick movie of the 2000s. Everyone wanted to be Elle Woods. They wanted to get those perfect grades, get the super hot dudes, and make all the money and be super successful. Well, for most of them, that isn't working out too well. And I'm gonna explain exactly why. I think it's because when you watch these films, you get a gross misunderstanding of what law school is like and what practicing as an attorney is actually like. Now, before I hate on Legally Blonde, I'm gonna give you three small things that the movie did get right. So, in the movie, you have Elle Woods, someone who ends up going to law school to become a lawyer. As part of law school, she learns that it's kind of tough. And that is the first thing that is accurate. Law school is tough. You do have to study. You do have hard exams. That is absolutely accurate. The next thing was the Socratic method. Now, what does that mean? The Socratic method is famously named after the philosopher Socrates. And what Socrates would do is he would ask questions in order to elicit answers. So instead of explaining, for example, a concept like justice, he would ask somebody a question. What do you think justice is? And then expand upon that. That's the same method that's used in law school. And that's portrayed very accurately in Legally Blonde, especially with the questions, the hard questions that are asked by the professors. They often use a technique called cold calling. That is, They'll call on you with no warning whatsoever, completely randomly, trying to get you to answer a question about a case or about the underlying law of the case. That's very common in law school and was portrayed accurately. The last thing is the admissions process. Now, I know, I know, I know. In the movie, you saw Elle Woods, this blonde SoCal girl in a bikini on a pool floaty as part of an admissions video. That's not allowed. You are not allowed to send in your bikini pics, no matter how much you think that's gonna persuade the admissions office. And trust me, I worked in the admissions office. I know what comes in. But what does help are things outside of your resume, outside of just your GPA and your LSAT score. And guys, as a reminder, the LSAT is the law SAT. Just think about it like the normal SAT, but for law, you're tested on reading, on logical reasoning and on basic logical games that will test your skills for being a lawyer. So most people tell you, focus on the LSAT, focus on your grades, but as somebody who worked in the admissions office, I can tell you that they do take into consider other factors, where you've worked, what you've done, if you've volunteered, and very importantly, if they know you, if you've called up and made a connection with them. So, just like Elle Woods was trying to make a connection through her video, you, if you're interested in law school, should try to make a connection with somebody at the university, particularly in the admissions office. Let's get to the hate, guys. The thing you've all been waiting for, and I am here to provide. So let's start with the first thing that really pissed me off, and that was the LSAT, the admissions test, 
and how they portrayed it as easy. They had her acing the test, getting a 179, a one point from perfect score. Now listen, it's certainly possible that a person can get that score. In fact, many people do get perfect scores. It is possible to get a perfect score. However, it is very, 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 very rare. And I say that knowing some extremely smart people. These are people that have ace tests their entire lives. All they do is train their legal minds. And if you wanna know more about that, watch my playlist. But those people, those people that are studying very hard still often only get a 170, 165, 168, 172. So when I saw Elle Woods just get that 179, it kind of pissed me off because I studied for that and took it multiple times. And I did bring up my score, but it wasn't to a 179. So that salt aside, let's move on to the next thing, which is Law school is shown as competitive. People constantly trying to undermine each other in order to get better grades. And actually, that is completely false. That is an old, outdated view of law school. Law school is much more collaborative than it is confrontational. And why is that? Because the people you're in law school with are going to become lawyers. And if, like most people, you're going to a law school in your state, let's say you were going to the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA Law School, you're probably gonna practice in LA. I'm very sorry for you, I would not wanna deal with that traffic or those taxes. But you wouldn't want to tick off those people that you're gonna work with. So why would you destroy their books? Why would you undermine them? Why would you give them the wrong answers? You wouldn't do that because these are the people you're gonna be working with. You would try to collaborate. You would try to get a good reputation and build a solid network. The next thing is, is that teachers, professors, 99% of the time do not actively practice law. And if they do, they're not very good lawyers. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. If you are doing anything in life, you have to focus on what you're doing to become good at that. And if you decide to do two jobs, you will never be as good as the person who focused on doing one specific thing and becoming good at it. Just remember that, lawyer or not, you need focus, you need to have a niche, to have an area of specialty. The professors that I know that are amazing professors have been professors for their entire career or the majority of their career. At least at a minimum, even if they were lawyers when they were younger, they are no longer practicing. They're focusing on their syllabus. They're focusing on their writing. They're focused on their public speaking. Those are wildly different skills from lawyers that are actually in court. The types of documents that somebody delivers to a judge is much different than a test written for students trying to explain basic legal concepts to, well, ignorant people. Because let's face it, law students, when they're just coming to law school, they're completely ignorant. They're totally unlike a judge who is a relatively sophisticated individual when it comes to the law. So in the movie, when we had Elle Woods working with Professor Callahan on a high profile case, that likely is a bunch of B. S. He would hire somebody like Johnny Cochran who just did criminal defense or a specialized attorney practicing in a specific area of law. In this case, it was murder in the movie. The next point, and this is a huge one, is that first year law students are not allowed to go to court. That's an absolute no. They are not allowed to represent clients. And they made up a law, a Massachusetts law, that said that law students could practice law. That is complete malarkey. Only in the third year of law school are people allowed in a very limited circumstance to work under an authorized attorney. But in the movie, L was a first year law student, way too young. As a first year law student, or a 1L, as we would commonly call them, you probably haven't had some basic courses you need to understand in order to go into a courtroom. Let's say criminal procedure or civil procedure. 
You probably don't understand ethics. You probably don't understand the duties to your client. And further, you haven't passed the bar. You're not even thinking about the bar the first year. You're thinking about passing those difficult first year exams. And therefore, it would be totally ridiculous to see L in a courtroom. And on top of that, most lawyers, spoiler alert, don't go to court. That's right, I know it sounds crazy, but lawyers typically settle cases. They typically don't go to court. And if they do, it's a big deal. Only the head partners, the top partners at the firm, and maybe their superstar associates, that is, the actual lawyers who are underneath the head partners would be allowed to go to court. They wouldn't bring some joke of a blonde into the courtroom just because she looked pretty in pink. That would not happen. Now, one thing that happened in the movie was Elle was pitted against many male characters. She was preyed upon by the older male partner at the law firm. This was setting an image of a male-dominated field where it's all dudes, it's all bros, and there's almost no girls involved in the practice of law. Well, I can understand this was 2001. So if you look at the statistics for 2001, 20 years ago now, Yes, there were more men practicing law and men in law school than women. That was absolutely the case in 2001. However, today, in 2021, for the past six years, women have outnumbered men at a staggering rate in law school. Almost 55% of all law school students are women. Therefore, men are now in the minority. It is a huge shift. In fact, at my first law firm, when I worked as a lawyer at my very first job, most of the partners, that is the people who were the higher ups at the law firm, they were women, they weren't men. Now, there can be a huge debate on whether or not men outperform women in the practice of law, and we're not gonna get into that today, probably another video, guys. But what we will get into is that it is not as allegedly patriarchal as shown in Legally Blonde. And certainly, if an older partner harassed a younger intern, they would be fired. In fact, today, there'd be charges brought against that partner. That is an absolute no-no and does not fly in 2021. The next point is that, and this is a big one, guys, there are no courtroom bombshells. I know, I know. Elle Woods dropped her massive attack on the perm defense that the murderer, well wait, spoiler alert, the person she was cross-examining was the murderer. Sorry to spoil that for you guys. But she dropped a massive bombshell regarding their defense that they were getting a perm at the time. Now, many cases that are shown in TV and film on many shows, let's say SVU, for example, will have some courtroom bombshell. This has even been parodied in shows like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where Mac, one of the characters from the show, comes in as the bombshell detective, attempts to drop the bombshell. This doesn't happen in reality, guys, and it's always one of the biggest things that triggers me as a lawyer because you have discovery, you have lists of witnesses that are produced beforehand. You really don't have many surprises at court other than what a particular witness might say on cross-examination. And this is one of the biggest issues between real court and the court that's shown on TV and in the eyes of the public. And this is a massive problem. And if you wanna to get to the root of that problem, check out my video, Real Court versus the Court of Public Opinion. 